In our last episode, we fully explored Seward Square, found the headquarters of Riley's Rangers, found a battle going on at the rear entrance to the Capitol building, and helped a prophet to shuffle off this mortal coil. Whoa, whoa, careful. At the end of Seward Square, we found the Anacostia metro station. Crossing the platform, we arrived at Rivet City, outside the ruins of DC. But back inside Anacostia Crossing, we surprisingly found a connection through the tunnels to Museum Station, which will take us to the mall. The mall is one of the last places in the ruins of DC that we have yet to explore. This was a surprising find because we didn't find it on the map we were using. And this path will save us a lot of time that we otherwise would have spent backtracking. And so to get to the mall, we take the Anacostia crossing door into Museum Station. We arrive in a small room with a door off its hinges. Heading through the door, we head back down to the tracks, and we see the Brotherhood graffiti pointing us northwest down the tracks. We pass by the corpse of a raider that we killed when we first discovered this path, and we continue to follow the tracks to the west. We travel for quite a while crisscrossing between wrecked rail cars until eventually we arrive in the metro station. We see firelight flickering off of raider scrap walls. Our Pip-Boy compass picks up movement off to the northwest. Then we see it. A raider is patrolling on top of one of these rail cars. Pulling out the silenced 10 millimeter, we can try for a sneak critical. Well, we got him, but we weren't as quiet as we tried to be. We ended up alerting more raiders here. Creeping inside, we find a scrap wall preventing us from going any further north. On the ground under a table is an easy locked ammo case, another one lying on top of it, and a third to the other side of it. The firelight I mentioned earlier is coming from this barrel fire. Moving around this concrete bench, we arrive at the bottom of the escalators. I tried to loot the body of the raider first by jumping up. We got him! This is gonna be fun! But we were seen. Moving to the rear of the escalators, we can wait for this guy with the shotgun! After looting the body, we can move around the escalators to finish exploring this loading platform before moving up. The train platform is just a huge, absolute mess. Not only do we find train cars askew in the tracks, rubble piled all around, but we even find cars lying on the train cars as if they had been driven into the metro station and crashed down here deliberately. Climbing atop the ruined train cars, we can peer to the north to see if these tunnels will take us anywhere. The lettering above the tunnel says northbound to Metro Central. Looks like we can take either of these. Taking the right one first, we can move forward. Our footsteps catch the attention of a nearby raider, and we can wait for him. The eastern track to the north is blocked, we can't get back there, but we can pass through a break in the wall to arrive on the western track, and here we can continue to follow it north. Eventually we find an employee's access door to the left, but it looks like the track continues on to the north. Well, we'll go up the staircase and through this door first. Creeping forward, we catch the attention of a raider. Fresh blood. <laughs> We find ourselves in a bit of a raider rec room. There's a pool table in the middle of the room covered in pool cues and billiard balls. A table against the southern wall has whiskey and some cherry bombs lying on it. There's whiskey on literally every table here. Against the northern wall, we find a couple of beds we can use to rest. There are some darts on the table right next to a copy of Grognak the Barbarian. Before leaving, we see a yellow switch on the wall. Oh, it opens a secret trap door. Let's see if we can close it again. And yeah, we can. 
we remember this. When we were exploring Metro Central, we found this path. We were gonna come back and take it to get to the mall before we found out that Anacostia Crossing had a pathway to the mall. The ghoul we killed is still lying at the bottom of these stairs. Well, we've been here. There's no need for us to go back. We can't sleep in any of the beds because there are enemies nearby. So heading out of the raider rec room, we can move back to the tracks and follow them north. Crouching down, we creep past sandbag barricades until again we see firelight flickering off to the north. Looks like there's some activity just around this corner to the right. It's go time. We stumbled upon a small raider outpost. There is a shelf directly to the north of us. On it is an ammo canister, a plunger, and a small box. We can loot one of the bodies. On this table is an assault rifle with a magazine of ammunition. Turning around, we find another shelf, this one with a footlocker, nothing much of interest on this shelf. And here we find a number of mattresses on the ground. At last, we can finally sleep to heal on up. But then turning west to continue down the tracks, we see our path forward is completely blocked in with rubble and ruined train cars. We can't go any further west. That makes both tracks on either side of the station a dead end for us. Our only path now is to head back to Museum Station and climb the escalators to the waiting platform. At the top, we find scrap bridges that connect to the train cars down on the tracks. We can cross these to find the corpse of the raider we killed. It was then that I remembered that I already looted him, heading back up to the waiting platform. We don't find much else. We see that we've got two paths out, a ramp leading out to the west and a ramp leading out to the east. We'll go west for now on the wall nearby. As we leave, we read exit to Museum of American History and Monuments. Uh, okay. Is that gonna put us in the thick of it or not? Turning around, we can cross the platform to see what the other sign would say. Exit to Museum of Technology and Monuments. Huh. Well, guess it doesn't really matter. We'll move east for now. Moving that way, we find a table covered in goodies. We find an easy locked ammunition canister, two more on the ground beneath the table, and then on the table, some jet, a fission battery, and buff out. On the wall, we find many of the same promotional posters for the Museum of Technology that we've seen all over the Capital Wasteland, but these are different because smack dab on top of them, we find a sticker. See it here. The it they're referring to is the Valiant Eleven Lunar Lander. It was part of the Virgo 2 moon landing mission in the Fallout universe. We found it when we explored the Museum of Technology in a previous episode. And it looks like this metro station will put us right outside of it. Continuing down the path, we find another checkpoint. And behind a sandbag barricade, another ammo canister. Then rounding another corner, we arrive at the gate leading out to the mall. It's dark outside. We're at the bottom of a small staircase, heading to the top. Oh, God. Ah, turning around, we can race back inside. Yikes. That one puts us right out by the trenches in the middle of the mall, swarming with super mutants. Yeah, I don't think I want to take that path just yet. Turning around and heading back inside, we can move to one of the mattresses we found earlier to rest until morning. That way we explore in the light of day, and then this time head west towards the Museum of History. Through the turnstiles, we find a ticket booth that's empty, a rad roach that's already dead, but then as we're about to pass a corner, whoops, we've got movement. Wait for it. That first VATS shot with the combat shotgun always misses. I hate it. Well, at least now we know why the rad roaches were dead. After looting the body, we can loot a Nuka Cola machine nearby and follow a trail of rad roach corpses to the bathroom. Man, this raider really hates rad roaches. This was the men's restroom. There's some buff out in one of the sinks and we find a skeleton and the corpse of a wastelander lying on the floor. 
But there's nothing in the urinals and nothing in any of these stalls until we get to the end, whereupon we find one piece of jet on the rim of a toilet. Mmm, some of that toilet jet. Nummy. Back out to the hallway, we can cross it to loot an edotronic on the wall. Here we find two pieces of mentats. Then turning around, we can open the door to the women's restroom. Here we find a vial of Radex on one of the sinks. A skeleton lying on the ground by the stalls and a box. Inside the box is a copy of Chinese Army Special Ops Training Manual. Again with the Chinese Army Training Manual. All over these metro stations. Beneath it is a bottle of Buff Out and some Jet. We can then examine all of the toilets. Aside from some cherry bombs in one, the rest are empty. Back out to the hallway, we can round a corner and then take the ramp up to the mall. This time, we arrive at the bottom of an escalator. Moving up the escalator, we see the Washington Monument towering above us off to the west. The monument appears to be walled off and gated. On the gate is Brotherhood of Steel graffiti. Before us, we see a bunch of trenches, and super mutants are swarming around them. But behind us, we see a huge building. Moving that way, we find a ghoul walking around. A ghoul named Willow. Another human with a death wish. Welcome to the mall, tourist. Um, where the hell did you come from? Nice to meet you, too. I'm the sentry for Underworld. City of ghouls, inside the museum. For a tourist, you're pretty clueless. My name's Willow, by the way. Did you say a city of ghouls? Sure did. Underworld, it's right inside the Museum of History, then through the Big Skull. Most of the residents ain't crazy about humans, but they'll sell to you, fix you up so long as your caps are good and you ain't a ghoul hater. You're crazy to stand out here. Aren't you afraid of the super mutants? Those knuckle draggers? Nah, they don't bother us ghouls. Maybe they see us as kin or something, I don't know. Now there's other assholes. Other assholes? Yeah, you know, those humans like you. Well, maybe not like you, I don't know, but humans all the same. The Brotherhood of Steel guys with their testosterone and power armor. Those psycho talent company mercs. Those other assholes. I'm not a tourist. Come on, here you are in the mall of our nation's fine capital, taking in the sights, visiting the monuments. Face it, you're a tourist. Well, I have to go now. Till next time, sightseer. We've done it. We've arrived at the underworld. Moving towards the building, we see a big banner hanging from it, the Museum of American History. Now, I've already done a video completely covering the underworld. We talked with every character, explored every room, every bit of loot. And so I won't do it all again here. Instead, you can watch that video by clicking here. I'll also put it next in the playlist for this series. But, as this is the first time we've stumbled upon a town throughout the natural course of our exploration of the Capital Wasteland, we can step inside to take advantage of some of the services. Moving into the underworld, we can get to know Winthrop. Winthrop is a good guy to know because we can exchange scrap metal that we find in the wasteland for chems. Additionally, he's a pretty decent repairman. Many of the scavengers and wanderers we've found have had a repair skill of 16. Winthrop's repair skill is 61. And so, even though ours will soon be better than his, we can still use him to repair some of our rare items that will be difficult to repair in the field. Then, moving into the chop shop, we can talk to Dr. Burrows and have him cure us of our radiation sickness. And a quick shot. All done. When done, we can explore his inventory. He acts as a merchant. We're pretty stocked up on most things that we need. Though he does sell right away, we could grab more of that if we wanted to. Really, I wanted to try and get a hold of his caps. So rifling through our inventory, we can sell everything we don't need. And we get a pretty good price for selling ammunition types that we don't need. For example, I haven't been using energy weapons very much, so I can sell some of my microfusion cells, which go for two caps per cell. Lying in a bed here, we at last meet Riley. 
That's right, The Riley of Riley's Rangers. Remember the radio broadcast we heard in Vernon Square told us that Riley was recuperating here in the underworld. If assistance is not possible, please attempt to contact Riley, who's made for Underworld inside the Museum of History. And here she is. If we wanted to, we could talk with her to start the Riley's Rangers quest. But we've already got it since we've been to Vernon Square. Then, moving into Underworld Outfitters, we can talk with Tulip. Tulip is an excellent vendor. Not only does she have over 600 caps to barter with, but she sells combat armor including combat helmets that we can use to repair our combat helmet. And the regular combat armor will repair Talon Company combat armor. So it's not like once we kill every member of Talon Company, we'll never be able to repair our armor again. As long as this merchant is still around, we'll be able to buy that combat armor. One thing I missed here is that she also sells an advanced radiation suit. We have only so far found a regular radiation suit while exploring the metros, and the advanced radiation suit grants us 10 more radiation resistance than the regular radiation suit. But most importantly, she sells our very first schematic, the schematics for the railway rifle, and she's asking for a hefty 1,127 caps. Well, we're almost there. We just need to find a way to raise the money. After selling everything we don't need to her, we can move upstairs and head into Carol's place. Carol is an innkeeper. She doesn't have an inventory, but her partner, Greta, is a merchant. She sells food, and she has 154 caps to barter with. Once we sell what we need, we can then move across the hallway to enter the ninth circle. Here we find the bartender and restauranteur, Azrakal. This shady character gives us a quest to get, in my opinion, one of the best companions in the game, Sharon. But I've already done a video on Azrakal here and Sharon that you can watch here. So instead, we'll simply use him as a merchant. He not only sells food and booze, but we can convince him to sell us chems. He's got about 200 caps to barter with. And that puts us about where we need to be. Heading out and back downstairs, we can return to Underworld Outfitters, talk with Tulip, and purchase the Railway Rifle Schematics. Then we can get most of our money back by selling more unwanted ammunition. Taking a look at it in our inventory, at a workbench, combine one crutch, one steam gauge assembly, one fission battery, and a pressure cooker. Firing the railway spikes that can be found in industrial sites or train stations, the railway rifle can stop targets in their tracks and pin their limbs to the wall. We have found lots of railway spikes so far. I've got a collection by now. Wouldn't it be nice to get our hands on this rifle? She does have a workbench in here, but sadly we don't have any of the components necessary to craft the thing. Well, we'll have to keep our eyes open. Once we are fully rested and fully healed of all radiation, we can leave Underworld to finish exploring the mall. Heading outside, we have to pick a direction, west or east. I decided to go west. We'll explore the mall in a counterclockwise fashion. Heading that way, we pass the Museum Station Metro map until we arrive at the foot of the Washington Monument. It's all fenced off with concrete and barbed wire. We'll try to get in once we come to the other side of it. Continuing west, we find lots of gaps and alleyways between these buildings, but most of these are going to be empty, like this one. However, nearby, we find a small hilltop with a Brotherhood of Steel guard post. Keep moving, Wastelander. He won't trade with us or give us anything, but he's got lots of goodies out here. Right away, Radex, first aid kits, ammo crates, but it's all set to own, and we'd have to steal it. Well, we're doing okay right now, so we'll leave this poor guy alone. Moving out and continuing west, we pass by the body of a vicious dog, a couple of them. Hmm. And on a sidewalk nearby, we find some frag mines laid out. Oh, great. How many are we gonna find? After looting them, we continue west. We find a metro marker pointing west. And then in an alley, a pile of rubble and rebar. Continuing west, we pass by a bus stop to the left, and then find another metro marker pointing to the right. Here we find a metro station, but it looks like we've already discovered it. Oh, 
Ooh, I backed too close to the reflecting pool. The reflecting pool is highly radioactive. We'll have to keep our distance. Well, the alleyway to the north is blocked in with rubble and rebar, so we can take the escalators down to see what metro station this is. This leads to... Oh, the Georgetown metro station. We've been here before. This is the metro station that had all of those skeletons on their way to work. There's the remains of that chef I was talking about. There's that student I pointed out. And then down on the train platform, there's the commie spy. I took time to go over this place once more to see if I could find any components for my railway rifle, but there was nothing here. I did find one piece of scrap, though, for Winthrop. So, since we've explored this place, we can retrace our steps and head back to the mall. Up the escalator, we again arrive at the road. Continuing west, we arrive at Lincoln Memorial Circle. We've arrived at the foot of the Lincoln Memorial. Getting closer, we find the remains of supermutants. And as we approach... That's close enough. What the hell are you doing wandering around here? Easy now. I'm just curious about this place. I'm not looking for trouble. Curiosity can get a wastelander killed. I'm going to let you through, but you'll have to talk to Mr. Walker first. Follow me. Oh, and stay off the memorial steps. They have orders to shoot anyone that gets too close. The dirt path is safe. With that, Silas asks us to follow him. This interaction is part of the Temple of the Union quest that we've already talked about. Remember, we found the corpse of that escaped slave in the metro tunnels, and on her body was a map to the Temple of the Union. Had we gone to the Temple of the Union, we could have worked with the escaped slaves to free the Lincoln Memorial, which is currently occupied by slavers. These are the slavers, and we could work with them instead. If we go to this little meeting that Silas is having us go to, the slavers ask us to go to the Temple of the Union to kill all of the escaped slaves. I went inside their little hideout here in the memorial maintenance room to see if I could find any scrap to build my railway rifle, but they didn't have anything. Well, we won't take his quest because we've already covered it in a previous episode. And so we can head back outside and continue on our way. Well, the Lincoln Memorial stands on the western border of the entire mall. The boundary of this zone is hedged in with big chunks of concrete. We find traps and mines if we try to get behind the Lincoln Memorial. But if we do, the slavers on the Lincoln Memorial turn hostile and begin to attack us. But again, I've already covered everything behind the Lincoln Memorial in my video on Temple of the Union. This is a dead end for us. We can't go any further west. So turning around, we can move east. And it's here where we discover a brand new metro station. Creeping closer, we discover the Mall Southwest metro station. But heading down to examine the gate, we see that it's the gate to Hazmat Disposal Site L5. Oh no, a Hazmat Disposal Site? Moving inside, we find it dark and misty. But we don't begin to pick up rads, at least not yet. We can loot Nuka-Cola from a tipped-over Nuka-Cola machine. We see that the ramp leading down to the waiting platform is blocked in with rubble, so instead we can turn south to head through a maintenance corridor, down a hallway, and rounding a corner to go even further down, we open a security gate. Yeah! Creeping inside the tunnels. Oh, well, there's the hazmat. We see a big pile of radioactive toxic barrels off to the east and a hole in the wall. Uh, okay. There's a hole in the wall leading apparently to a cave system. Well, we don't see any radioactive barrels down this way. Let's head here first. Creeping through the crack in the wall, we indeed arrive in a cave system. We ultimately end up passing one barrel, but we don't take on any rads. As we continue forward, we begin to see pipes snaking through the earth above us. Many of them are leaking some sort of steam. The earthen ramp begins to go downhill, and then we find... Oh, shoot! Oh, gas! We ignited the gas! Oh, no, and our body slid down the hill! Oh, okay, where are the ghouls? Oh! Cool. 
Jeez, talk on stinking gas. Ugh. Well, there's some substance still leaking out of these pipes, but I think we ignited all of the gas. Heading back down the ramp, we can loot the bodies. On one, we find a metro ticket. All right, Rad X on the other. Now from here, we can turn a corner to the northeast to find another path going off to the north. Uh, but turning around, we find a staircase going off to the south. And then to the west, we find the corpse of a wastelander lying amongst some pipes and a toolbox. On his body is some Medex and some Mentats. In the toolbox, we find two more pieces of scrap metal for Winthrop. All right. Okay, well, which way do we go? Do we follow the pipes around to the north? Or do we go up the staircase to the south? Um, we'll follow the pipes into this tunnel for now. Down the tunnel, we round a corner to find a room with big iron girders. We see mist hanging in the air, and we hear a couple of ghouls. I thought the mist might be flammable. But if it was, apparently, Chinese assault rifle ammo doesn't ignite it. That caught the attention of a glowing one. My health is getting low, but I really don't want to waste my stim packs. Creeping forward, we see a pathway off to the right, and then more radioactive barrels to the left. Uh, well, let's avoid the radioactive barrels, and we can move off to the right. Passing a light and some machinery, we find a path going down to the east. Moving down the path and continuing forward, we again arrive in a large room filled with iron girders and a bunch more ghouls. <sighs> Well, it looks like we have a couple of paths here. We find a path to the north, and it looks like we can continue to the south. Lying near to a generator is the corpse of a wastelander. On his body is Jet, Radex, and a Stimpak. Well, moving north for now, we find that the cave exits into a sewer utility room. To the right is the terminal, but we hear the sounds of ghouls on the other side of this door. Moving to the terminal, we try to hack it only to discover that it's locked with hard encryption but we don't have time to worry about it when the door opens behind us. No, oh, and I'm still in my radiation suit, but that's okay. I can get him before he touches me. Well, at least I thought I could. Oh, wait, there's another? God, doggone ghouls. Anyway, this terminal is locked with a hard lock. It's the turret control system. Oh, are you telling me there's a turret in the other room that I could have activated to kill all of those ghouls for me? Well, I can't hack it. I'm at 45, not 75, so we'll have to creep into the room for now. Hopefully, the turret's not on. Oh, and there it is. Creeping inside, we see it, and it doesn't appear to be on. We can take care of it anyway. Well, before we head upstairs, as I think that's probably the way out... Oh, look! There's a body up there. Well, as I say, before we head upstairs, let's turn around and see what we find deeper into the cave. Moving forward... Oh, look at that. There are two more turrets on the other side of this iron girder. Oh, if we could have hacked the terminal, we could have taken care of all of these ghouls in the room and out here. Well, this is a big missed opportunity for me. Instead, we have to move forward past piles of radioactive barrels. This large room narrows, but then it opens up again. And here we at last find the bulk of the hazardous material disposed of in this site. Pre-war America disposed of their nuclear waste beneath a metro station? Good God, what were they thinking? But we don't have time to be gobsmacked in horror because we hear ghouls off in the distance. Moving forward, we see a couple of paths, one to the west and one to the south. Moving south first, we find a ramp leading up. Oh. 
It looks like that ramp leads up to a metro station. Okay, I guess that's the way out. Well, turning around, we can see what was down that path to the west. And just past a construction light, we find more ghouls. Footsteps behind me! Oh, there he is. God, where did he come from? And that gives us our level 11. I dumped everything into repair. Winthrop's repair skill was great, but it was really expensive. And now, our repair is better than his. Then I chose the Commando Perk which greatly increases my accuracy in VATS with any two-handed rifle-type weapon. Moving forward past the construction light, we can loot the bodies of the ghouls. We see a path off to the west and a path to the northeast. Moving northeast for now, we see this path blocked in with big rocks. We can't jump up there from here, so turning around, we can move west. We arrive at the bottom of a staircase, and here lies the corpse of a raider. Moving up the stairs, we arrive on a catwalk. Crossing the catwalk, we turn right, where we find more flammable gas hovering in the air. We can try to ignite it with the hunting rifle. All right, so my Chinese assault rifle ignited it the first time, but not the second time, and the hunting rifle didn't do it. Oh. I see, it was the flame from the barrel of the Chinese assault rifle that ignited the gas the first time, not the hot bullet that came out of the barrel. That's why it didn't work the second time, and that's why it didn't work from range with the hunting rifle. The laser rifle worked because the laser is essentially fire, hot light. So if I want to ignite gas from range, I gotta use a laser weapon, and I gotta be careful when firing a ballistic weapon while surrounded by gas. Crossing this catwalk and moving down, we arrive, oh, we're right back where we started. This is where we caught fire the first time by igniting that gas. This is where we slid down that ramp after the gas incapacitated us and we killed those two ghouls. There's the body of the wastelander over there at the bottom of the pipes. Okay, so we've done a big loop. Well, that must mean that if we turn this corner to the northeast and follow the pipes above us, sure enough, we'll arrive back in that room with a pile of nuclear waste, and we can follow it all the way back into the room with the turrets on the other side of the iron girders. Okay, well that gives us two paths then, to see what was up the staircase in the room next to the turret control terminal, or to see what was up the ramp that led to the metro station. Well, we'll see what's up the ramp that leads to the metro station. At the top of the ramp, we arrive in a metro tunnel. If we turn around to the north and see what's over here, we can't go any further this way. It's blocked in with rubble. So moving back towards the train car, we find a door in the wall to the east. This leads us to a staircase that we can climb. And at the top, we find a super mutant. <laughs> there you are! Well, if a super mutant is here, that means we must be near the exit. Opening the door the mutant was standing in front of leads to a train station. All right, but which one? Oh, we see eyes peering at us from a nearby baby carriage. Getting closer. Oh, that's right. One of these days I'll put points into explosives. The ramp leading down to the waiting platform is blocked in with rubble, but here we find a bed at last. We can rest for an hour to heal on up. Moving around towards the ramp that leads out of this place, we see it brings us to... L'Enfant Plaza. Ah, this is our way out. We recall that the map tells us that the only way south out of the mall is through this pathway to L'Enfant Plaza. And then from L'Enfant Plaza, we exit through the irradiated metro back out into the capital wasteland. So this is where we're going to have to end the episode. But we haven't finished exploring the mall yet. So before moving forward, we can turn around and head back into Hazmat Disposal Site L5. This leaves one thing yet to explore in the disposal site, and that's to retrace our steps until we arrive back at that room next to the turret control terminal. 
After all, we never climbed this staircase. Climbing the staircase all the way to the top, we arrive in a small room with a generator and that corpse lying over this railing. It's the corpse of a mercenary. He has nothing interesting on his inventory. We don't find any loot or switches in this room, just gas or steam pouring out of these pipes in the ceiling. But in the western wall, we find a pathway and a staircase that brings us out to a sewer. The southern path is a dead end, but we see big irradiated barrels off to the north, and it looks like this path loops around. Moving that way and sneaking past these barrels... Oh, well, wait a minute. We're back. Here's that big crack in the wall that led us to the disposal site beneath the metro that we just explored. Oh, I see. We're at the bottom of the staircase. Okay, so we just need to follow this all the way back up and head back through the metro tunnel to again arrive back at the mall. Perfect. We were headed back anyway. We arrive back at the mall in the dead of night, but it's not too dark as the entirety of the mall is well lit with street lamps. We'll press on for now. Continuing east, we find another alleyway between these two buildings. This, like all of the rest, is completely blocked in with rubble. Back to the road, we continue east. I wanted to get a good look at the reflecting pool, so donning my radiation outfit and taking some radex, we can creep closer. We don't see our reflection in the reflecting pool. It's murky and green, and a haze hangs over the water. There's nothing of interest in this pool. We just see rocks sticking out, a car or two here and there. But off in the distance on the other side, which we already passed through, we find more vicious dogs. We passed right through there and saw the bodies of a few vicious dogs, but there weren't any live ones at the time. I wonder where those guys came from. Well, back to the road, we can continue east, but then we find a big chunk of road missing. This part of the road is completely blown out, and whatever removed this chunk of road has revealed a grate leading to a pipe or a sewer. I bet you this leads somewhere, but before we can explore it, we see movement off to the east. A lot of movement. It's rad roaches. We can pull out our shocker power fist to kill them all. In this alley is a human body. A couple of different torsos. Ugh, this must have lured the rad roaches here. But there is nothing else down this alley. So, turning around, we can move into that big hole in the road. And sure enough, this pipe is covered by a sewer grate that leads to a Mirelurk nesting hole. Oh no, Mirelurks. Inside, we find ourselves in a dark, dank, cave-like ruin. The only light comes from glowing fungus. It's the perfect place for a Mirelurk den. We see human bones and garbage littering the ground. Brain fungus, corrugated metal, tin cans, and boxes. It's a rubbish pile. There is only one pathway out of this rubble pile. As we continue, we realize that it's eerily beautiful. The glowing fungus all over the place brightly illuminates this cavernous interior. Eventually, we come to a crossroads. We could take a path up to the southeast, where we see some running water, or we could move to the southwest, where we see a shopping cart. We'll move southwest for now. Creeping that way, we round a corner, pass by a barrel under a couple of pipes until we reach a long tunnel with more dripping water. As we get close to the water, we begin to take on rads, so making sure we have our radiation suit equipped and popping some radex, we can pass underneath these dripping pipes. This puts us into a large room filled with concrete pillars and with pipes snaking across the ceiling. What a cool area! 
continuing forward past more dripping water, we see big piles of concrete to the southeast, as if the water pouring from these pipes had eroded some of the foundations of the nearby structures over the past 200 years, creating this cavern. And it's here where, off in the distance, we find our first Mirelurk. Ah, uh, you know, I got this missile launcher. Might as well put it to good use. Oh, and a good first shot. Almost dead. Oh, man. Shotgun. Oh, a little bit of clipping in the VAT cinematic there, but we got the job done. Ooh, but it's here I began to realize that the condition on my shotgun was getting pretty low. We'll have to use it carefully from now on. I should have had Winthrop repair it when we were back at the underworld. Oh, well, we'll have to make our way back there. We find a little opening, and lying on the ground are the remains of several people. And one of them looks to be the size of a child. Scattered amongst the remains are lead pipes, bottles of dirty water. We find a first aid box with purified water, Radaway, and stim packs inside, and then a suitcase with clothing inside. The path continues to the south southwest, passing under a pipe. We navigate past a bunch of bones until we arrive in a small darkened room, but here we find a stalagmite column that is broken off and tipped over onto its side. If we use the stalagmite as a ramp, we can climb up to the opening where we find a human skeleton. The skeleton is clutching an assault rifle, and right next to it is a first aid box with Radaway and a stim pack inside. Oh, this is really where we need to go if we want to find Radaway. I was having such a hard time finding it. Ooh. Well... Since we're done desecrating the dead, we can hop back down and continue following this cave floor to the south. Here we find even more animal bones and a recent kill. The body of a two-headed Brahmin lies amongst these bones. The path continues off to the southeast, but there is a little nook here. We find more human remains here. And next to the human skeleton is a combat knife lying on top of a first aid kit within which we find a stim pack. And here we find another suitcase, but this one is empty. Why are there so many human skeletons and why do so many of them have first aid kits and suitcases? Could this cavern have existed the day the bombs dropped? Could this be one of the many places people took refuge shortly after the apocalypse? Continuing down the tunnel path, eventually it leads to a ledge overlooking a large room below. And down below, we find a mire lurk. He spots us, but he runs off. He can't get to us from down there. So we can grab our hunting rifle, creep a little forward atop this rock, and try to take some putt shots. Oh, but the slagmites and columns are getting in our way. Tell you what we'll do, we'll grab some frag mines and toss them over this rock. That's right, come and get them, buddy. Then, hopping down, we can lure the Mirelurks our way with the hunting rifle. Got him. All right, so we came from there. Turning around, we see a path to the northwest, a path to the northeast, and a path to the south. Uh, well, we'll go northwest for now. Moving northwest, we see it wasn't a path, it was more of a nook. Here we find more bones. Brahmin skulls and boxes. Next to one of these wooden boxes is a box of shotgun shells. 
with more shotgun shells by some bones. In the box, we find cigarettes and some turpentine. And then moving northwest, we find another box hiding by this barrel. In this box are some pork and beans and a stim pack. With this nook clear and it being a dead end, we can turn around so we could go to the northeast where off in the distance, we see some sort of support structure, some man-made building foundations maybe. Or we could go to the south where those Mirelurks were walking. We'll go to the northeast. Sure enough, as we move closer, we see big piles of concrete and these rusting iron girders supporting what appear to be the foundations of one of the nearby structures in the mall. What a fascinating level of detail that they've included in this underground cave. Continuing north, we see the path goes off to the north-northwest and we find a little nook over here to the northeast. Here we find more bones and then a box next to a human skeleton. Gosh, there are human remains everywhere. Inside the box are two stim packs, some rat away, more pork and beans, some rad X and some dirty water. Then by the skeleton, we see the remains of an old campfire built on a tire. Here we find whiskey, more canned foods, and another combat knife. This little nook is a dead end though, so back down to the pathway, we can follow it between these two big rocks. The path goes uphill. Then we squeeze between even more tight places amongst the rocks. Eventually, we find a ramp going up and we see dripping water ahead of us. Moving underneath the dripping water, we come face to face with... Oh. No! It's a Mirelurk freaking hunter! God! Oh, and here I am in my radiation suit to kill a Mirelurk hunter. All right, I'll spare one stim pack. Continuing up the ramp, the path moves off to the northeast and here we find the remains of giant ants. Oh God, how did these guys get all the way here from Grey Ditch? Well, now we know the answer to the age old question, who would win in a fight, a Myrler Hunter or two giant ants? And the answer is not the giant ants. If we use the stones as steps, we can leap up to a ledge overlooking the giant ant corpses to find more animal bones, another human skeleton, and clutches of giant ant eggs. Sadly, no other loot up here. But if the giant ants could get all the way here from Grey Ditch, well, I suppose that means they could be anywhere by now. Back to the ground, we can continue to follow the path to the northeast. We squeeze between more rocks, more concrete building foundations above us. The tunnel twists and turns. We travel under more water, past more glowing fungus, until we arrive at a familiar crossroads. Oh, we've been here before. There's that shopping cart, I see. That's the path we came from when we entered the pipe in the mall. That's the path we took with the shopping cart, and that's the path we avoided at the time because we saw that flowing water. We've just done a big loop, but that's not all there is to this place. There was another path we passed. So heading back down the path with the shopping cart, we can follow it, retrace our steps, past the bodies of the Mirelurks we killed, past the Brahmin corpse, all the way until we again arrive on that ledge overlooking the room below. Then hopping down, we can take the final path. The path where we killed the Mirelurks with the mines off to the south. Moving that way, we pass by huge boulders. We arrive in a room with a vaulted ceiling. Off to the west, we see another Brahmin body lying on a ledge. And there appear to be holes and ledges illuminated by glowing fungus all the way up there. I wonder if we can get there. From the ground here, we see a couple of tunnels off to the west and the northwest. Moving towards the big tunnel first, we find the body of a raider. On her body is some 10 millimeter ammo, and next to her corpse is a human skeleton and an ammunition box. The large tunnel leads to an even larger room. Well, I wanted to see where that small tunnel would have led to. So creeping around this pillar towards the small hole, we find more animal remains, another human skeleton, another box, and in the box more right away and mentats. It looks like this tunnel actually leads to the same room the large tunnel led to. 
something spots us. Turning around, we can get to open ground and lay down our last two frag mines. It's a Myra Lurk, turning around and waiting for it with a shotgun. Oh, uh, did I get it? Wait, oh, not dead. No, it's dead. <laughs> All right, Mirelurk dead. There's the two tunnels again. Moving towards the bigger tunnel this time, we can pass through it with the sniper rifle. And as we round a corner... Oh, God, no. It's a Mirelurk king! That's our first Mirelurk King. I included some in the intro movie to this series, but up until this point, with my brand spanking new out of the vault character, we haven't met any yet. I think we finally got to meet some because my character is high enough level two. Moving into the room with the Mirelurk King, we see that it's a large circular room and lining the walls on every side is some sort of ledge with a hole overlooking this huge chamber. Ooh, what's that? Off in the distance, we see a glow. That's a Nuka-Cola Quantum. Well, how do we get up there? Looks like we got some parkouring to do. After looting the Mire Alert King, we can first explore the ground here. To the north, we find a huge pile of bones and eggs and fungus. And amongst them, we find two ammo canisters, an assault rifle, more human remains, another box with stim packs and rad X inside, a camera on the ground next to even more human remains, and a first aid kit with more Radex and a stim pack. This room is a dead end. There's no other path that leads out of it. Now, I wanna focus on trying to get to those ledges overlooking this large chamber. If we move to the southwest, we find that the rubble is shallow enough to climb up it. And if we do, we can creep up to this wall where we find the Nuka-Cola Quantum. It sits here amongst a bunch of boxes and a human skeleton with a ham radio. God, the people must have come down here just after the bombs dropped and huddled together radioing for help until they were killed by the radiation or worse. In one of the boxes is a knife and some dirty water and another box is whiskey and pork and beans. And then we can loot the Nuka-Cola Quantum. All right, that's one of the ledges overlooking this room explored. How do we get to the rest? Back down on the ground. Near to the ammo crate, we find a slab of concrete that kind of acts like a ramp. We can slide up it to find a couple of rocks that look like stepping stones. We can bunny hop up the side here until we can't go anymore, and then we sort of skirt to the right to arrive on this ledge. Here we find a rock bridge that leads us to an opening. Dropping down into the opening, we find footprints in the sand. Following the footprints, we find a small cave, and in the cave, is a huge stash. We find the remains of a human clutching an assault rifle on a box nearby is another Chinese Army Special Ops training manual. God, how many Chinese commandos were here in the Capital Wasteland? Then on the ground nearby, we find a magazine for the assault rifle in the box, another magazine for the assault rifle, and a stim pack. Next to the skeleton is a first aid box, and then nearby is a sledgehammer. I think we can deduce why this skeleton and his belongings were all the way up here in this little nook. This must have been a Chinese spy or a sympathizer who got caught in the nuclear apocalypse along with all of the Americans. He too sought cover, but because he was Chinese, he wanted to avoid socializing with all of the other survivors. And so he put himself up in this little nook away from everyone where he died to the same radiation that they all did. Heading back out, before we drop down, if we look off to the southeast, we see a more recent corpse. Oh, how'd he get up there? Well, we can move to the southeast to creep across this rock, and sure enough, we can leap upon the ledge this guy is lying upon. And here we find ourselves on that ledge overlooking the room that had the Brahmin corpse hanging out of it. This guy was a mercenary. 
He's got microfusion cells and a laser rifle on his inventory, but he lies amongst older remains. In addition to a Mirelurk egg clutch up here, we find more Brahmin skulls and, of course, the dead Brahmin. There's an older skeleton here, but sadly, no more loot. Looks like the Mirelurks can be quite nimble when they want to be, if they lay their eggs and place their kills even all the way up here. I really wanted to give this entire cave a thorough going over, so I spent quite some time skirting every ledge, leaping upon every rock, scouring every crevice to see if I could find any more little secrets, but I think I got them all. That was the last of them. And so we can retrace our steps to leave this place. I gotta say that I'm absolutely thrilled with this discovery. I didn't know it was here before I sat down to do this series. This is one of the reasons I wanted to do this series on the Fallout 3 Metro system and everything it connects to, because I knew there had to be little places like this tucked away that I had never seen before. I've cleared the mall several times on several characters in the past, but I've always been so preoccupied with completing my quests or working on my character that I never had the time to find this little hidden secret tucked away in a ruined pipe in a small broken section of the road. Awesome. It's things like this that remind me why I loved Fallout 3 as much as I did when it came out back in 2008. But after retracing our steps all the way through this maze-like subterranean series of tunnels, we again arrive back at the mall. We continue to follow the road east to finish exploring the mall in a counterclockwise fashion. However, I am all out of time. I'm going to have to split our exploration of the mall into two episodes, because this place is just that big. That's all for now, but in our next episode, we'll completely finish exploring the mall, uncovering the rest of its secrets. If you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still believe you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support my channel in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon gain access to a private channel on my Discord server for members only, and YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos, and access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.